Get ready and strap in for the One Love HTX show, where all our conversations are always raw, unfiltered, and never staged. We can also be found on Instagram, all major streaming platforms, and westcliff.org. Check us out at onelovehtx.org for more info or ways to support the show. Now get ready to dive into conversations you won't always have in church with your hosts, Joshua Duffy and Daniel Salsi. The guitar always does it for me. <laughs> Outstanding. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of One Love, One Love HTX and Westcliff Climb or All the Goodness. Dot goodness. Dot goodness. <laughs> so today's topic <laughs> labeled the Pirate's Curse. Arg, matey. That's, <laughs> there's a whole reason for it. Just uh, deal with me right now. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> but before we get into that, as usual, I, I have some really cool stuff. Duffy doesn't even know about this yet. So uh, we're all going to get in this together. So upcoming, we have confirmed August 26th and 27th in Houston. We put the budget together. Uh, everything's good for a One Love Whosoever's uh, event. We're going to be. Wow. Yeah. We're going to be at the North Houston Skate Park on the 26th. And it's going to be, it's actually a city driven event. It's back to school. They have a park uh, beside the skate park where they're, they do like tons of backpacks and school supplies Love and everything it. for the kids. So it's going to be really nice there. They've asked us to come in and do something at the skate park. So we're going to have a stage there. We're going to have a band, uh, actually multiple bands, but one particular band in, uh, that you need to check out is a band called Relent. They're actually friends with, uh, Brian Head Welch and a bunch of other people, right um, really talented guys. So they're going to be the headliners. We're bringing in some local talent. If you're listening to this in your Houston area and you might know some local talent, maybe you are the local talent. Uh, send me over a, a message and send me some stuff. We're trying to find some opening acts for them, which is going to be really cool. And then we have uh, confirmed thousand, thousands actually, uh, 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 dollars in cash and prizes oh yeah what oh yeah so we're gonna have uh at least a thousand dollars in cash that we're handing out in 20s or hundreds or whatever for you know dope tricks and all kinds of stuff yeah we're gonna what? do this upright and tons of whosoever gear we're, we're tossing out whosoever skateboards t-shirts stickers you name it we're gonna have uh food trucks uh all kinds of goodies it's gonna be now can i open the act only be musical uh wait what are you thinking i mean can you have a juggler <laughs> Can you imagine? Uh, like, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah, uh, you cannot come. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to phantom joke. Right. Even better. Uh, no prize for that. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then in Galveston the next day, the 27th, it's going to be at the Johnny Romano Skate Park. Nice. There. And then in front of that is a big open field area that's beachside. It actually faces the beach. And we're going to have a stage there and do the same thing. I think that one's going to be a little bit more festive. We're going to have vendors and food trucks and talent and all kinds of stuff in the same you cool. know, music and everything, but, and, and same prizes there too. But here's the cool part. Uh, so we, we get, we confirmed relent yesterday. We're about 75%. And, I, and I'm feeling pretty good about this. That was a, that was a great, I was very happy with in high school. 75%. <laughs> I'm over the moon right now. I mean, at this point, I'm sold. I don't know. Whatever you say next. 75? I got to go outside at 75%. That was my that was my high mark. So 75%. We're we're he he's seeming pretty good about it. If you're familiar with a professional skateboarder by the name of Christian Hasoy. Huh. We're talking to him. He is really down for this. He wants to come out there. So uh, he'll be at both events. Prayers, prayers, prayers. It all goes well. So love it. Uh, love yeah. it. And then there's some other, other uh, goodness going on in there. So uh, check out, we're, we're about to, again, we're about to relaunch the website. Uh, all the information will be on there, hopefully within the next week. Uh, ways to donate, et cetera. We are rolling within two days of opening the floodgate. 
funds for raising funds, we almost got half of our budget. It's a whole other story. We'll share for another time, but it was just nuts. Nuts. Yeah, Love it. This is supposed to be happening. So well, we hope to see you out there. All right. The Pirate's Coice. Ag. <laughs> Do we even know if pirates ever made that noise? Has anyone I, ever looked at it historically? Like, where did I, that come from? I believe they did. I, at least I want to believe they did. I mean, why it's not? It's cool. Why not? I'm in. <laughs> I talk like a pirate occasionally because it's fun. <laughs> All right. So I, I, I label it that because there's this thing that I've read over and over again. And this is why we have Duffy here so he can shed some light on my brain and the brains that I run into out oh, there. Boy. <laughs> so has anyone ever heard of generational curses? I the, the, think the Bible speaks about it. Um, and the word curse, that's what got me. I keep hearing curse like uh, repent. I think I've talked about it before. The word yeah. repent was so harsh. Yeah. It was just like, ah, when it, actually, when you go back and look at the root, it just means turn, like, yeah, turn away from it. Yeah. That's what God was saying, not, you know, repent, you loser. Right. Well, curse to me has kind of been that too. It's like curse is harsh. And then when you, when you hear curse in just the everyday world, I mean, you hear of pirates' curses, you hear of curses for witches, curses, 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 and it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 Typically, uh, people tend to think that if if you have a curse, that you ain't getting out of it. Right. Like it's a bad thing. Right. So I started like I, I'm having these conversations. I'm like, yeah, this is a this is a scary thing for people. They hear this. And when I looked at the root word for curse, I can't even pronounce it. Maybe you know it. Um, it, it just means binding. Wow. Binding. And so when I think of a binding, I think of I can get out of that. Right? <laughs> it's just a binding. <laughs> that means there's a way out, right? So like, there, in other words, like Houdini never had an issue with yeah. binding curses. Yeah. Houdini was, yeah. Houdini was cursed in bindings. <laughs> so there's always a key, right? Yeah. There's got to be a key. There's yeah. got to be a, 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 a knot to untie. Yeah. Whatever it is. So that wasn't, when I read that, I was like, hey, that doesn't seem so scary. And so reading about generational curses, uh, there's a verse in the Bible that says, for the sins of the father, right? That's what I was Googling uh, while you were talking. Okay, read it. What does it say? So, uh, yeah, because you forced me to go to Google. <laughs> so way to go. Deuteronomy 5, 8 to 10 says, you shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on earth beneath or in the waters below, you shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. Okay, now that's cool. So I'm going to read this. I'm going to come on top of Is that. Is this a Google off? This is a Google off. Wow. <laughs> Here we go. Google, 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 Google. Okay. Both of us are showing what we don't just naturally know right, right now. Right, we don't actually know. Yeah. So people so that, tuned in to hear us Google back and forth. <laughs> I wish Google had a noise. <laughs> okay. Ezekiel 18. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you people mean by quoting this proverb about the land of Israel? The parents eat sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. Hmm. As surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, you will no longer quote this proverb in Israel. For everyone belongs to me, the parent as well as the child. Both alike belong to me. The one who sins is the one who will die. Wow. Boom. So there, So now that we got conflicting and we're going, okay, what's going on? And so as, as I was kind of just like diving into this, like what? Okay, I, curse doesn't shouldn't scare me. Uh, it's not, you know, some pirate's curse or some witch's curse that is going to hold me uh, because I'm a child of the living God. Yeah. Right. He's my, he's my, uh, my protector. Um, and, and looking at all that and how that goes, the first thing I saw was this, the third to fourth generation. So when one does wrong, it'll follow to the third and fourth generation. Yeah. What actually, 
actually follows is what I what I saw is that doesn't mean and correct me if I'm wrong, but that doesn't mean that God's going, OK, you become a raging alcoholic. Slapping people around and being horrible. Yeah, because you have kids, they're going to do the same thing for three or four generations. Right, right. It doesn't mean that. And I think and the reason why I bring this up is I think we learn or hear even incorrectly and we actually make our own world. Yeah. That's incorrect. We, we, we actually curse ourselves in a way we bind ourselves in a way when that's not what's happening. What's happening is. And I'll speak to my life. There's someone in my life that did some, some wrong things. I'm going to witness it and I have a choice. Yeah. Yeah. And I can either continue that choice and walk into it as this is all I know. This is, this is what I'm going to be. And this is who I'm going to be. Or I can say, you know what? I got a relationship with God. I have a, I have a blueprint in front of me of, of what life looks like to, yeah. to live well. Yeah. And I'm going to choose not to do that. Yeah. What follows me are my, are the choices in which I, I choose to do or the, the pain. I mean, if, if, a, if a father is, is a raging alcoholic, um, sure. There's going to be some things that, that come over to me, neglect. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, abuse, whatever it could be, but it doesn't mean I have to stay there. Am, am I right in saying that? I think you're solid. I, I, I think, um, God is really passionate about the individual, then the marriage, then the family, and then the community. And that's why there's language in scripture. That's about the individual, how to mm -hmm. think about the individual. But then there's like, like they're a holy nation, a set apart people. So then there's also this idea of there's a group of you and you represent X, Y, or Z. So I would say, um, if you show me a culture that's out of control, okay, a culture that's lost its mind, I can show you families that are overwhelmingly broken, followed by marriages built on the wrong thing, followed by individuals who don't know their identity in Christ. So it's important to know that all these things feed into the next thing. And what, I, what I'm trying to say when we think about curses and all of that, all the talk you're talking is I, I think you're on point. What I would, what I would highlight for people is that um, there's kind of two ways of thinking about it. One is you grew up in an alcoholic home, right? If, if you grew up in an alcoholic home or an abusive home. So now there are, there are, there are certain holes in the human heart and soul. Mm -hmm that now exist. The great irony, of course, is when someone grows up in an alcoholic home, just using that as an example, and because they are so riddled with pain from their broken childhood, their way of numbing their hatred mm -hmm. for the alcoholic parent is the, is the irony is they end up drinking or drugs right. to numb the pain. And they actually end up in dealing with the pain incorrectly because it wasn't maybe modeled for them what it looked like to follow Jesus and trust him in adversity and hard times. They watch someone else, but they didn't maybe know as a kid, oh, they're numbing their issues. Right. We never have that perspective. We just know it's our fault. That's what, that's what kids tend right. to think. I'm the problem. I'm the reason I wasn't enough. Whatever was put on me is mine. And I think that's one way of thinking about how generational curse happens. You grow up in a broken home. You grow up in a, a divorced home. And then there's something that's missing on what you're maybe looking for in a spouse because you don't know any better. Right. And so that easily it gets passed on. Now the next generation is divorced. Why? Well, they, they didn't have a good example of how this was supposed to work. Conflict resolution, loving each other no matter what. I mean, you can do the math mm -hmm. pretty simply of how we end up with generations of addiction, generations of issues. Mm -hmm. um, I bring up the other thing earlier about the individual and the community because God is really passionate about the generational discussion. Right. Very passionate. Now, if we want to go creepy crawly side of this spiritually, <laughs> right? Like there are realities in other parts of the world. And I dare I even argue maybe in, in ours as well, where you have people generationally dabbling in things spiritually dark. Right. Um, or literally made like a pact with quite literally with Satan for success in some part of their lives. And, and I'm, I'm not just making like, 
I, it's I, real. I am. I as a pastor am dealing with this. Right. Like now, I, I am. I'm dealing with situations that are very, very real. And you know, that's what we sometimes we can forget is like we may know grandma, right. but did you know great grandma? And did you know great, 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 great? No, you didn't. Five, three, four, five generations earlier. Right. And so that's how things can get passed on too. And I think what's important is whether it's alcoholism abuse of some kind neglect or if it's even to that other extreme of like a literal like ritual yeah there is a spiritual realm and a spirit that feeds off of that mm -hmm. to create insecurity fear instability um you, you know what i mean yeah 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 and so it no matter what it's getting its foothold so then the real question is per your point like is it real yes and amen Mm -hmm. But that other half of that statement to a thousand generations who love me, well, there's the, there's the antithesis. That's right. how you break it. Yeah. And that, that's actually, I, I was going to have you read that again. So you just did it. Perfect. You read my mind. Boom. That, that part. Pirate's code. The, <laughs> that really struck me because we see this a lot in the Bible. Like when uh, they were asking Jesus, like, how many times do I forgive my brother? And he says, seven times 77. And, and I've actually heard someone say, yeah, that means so what seven times 77 equals. So once right. after that, you can right. do it. No, no, no. That's not what he's saying. Right. He's not saying an actual number. He's basically saying that's an almost impossible to do. Yeah. Good okay? luck. Yeah. Good yeah. luck. So just, you need to forgive. That's it. Period. And, and I think that's the same thing here that I got out of it is, you know, do wrong to third and fourth generation you do right it's to the what thousand thousands and so the picture i got was how that's actually merciful it, what he's showing is is mercy and grace and love you do wrong essentially mm, there's some stuff you do right radiance yeah radiance comes yeah. your way yeah and that that was nuts to me it was more of not so much the number but the character of God and how he reacts to it and how naturally, again, it's good. It's what fills us. Yeah. We yeah. choose to do right. Our choice, the radiance that fills us is unbearable. Yes. And incredible and amazing. Yeah. And more adjectives. <laughs> is that an adjective? Well, so, so give, give me, give maybe for our listeners more context of what, what's the kind of like, for this topic, what are they kind of most concerned about, worried about? The, okay, that's a great question. So I think the big thing is 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 um, we put too much stock in it, or I've heard too much stock in it. Like, like it controls me. Yeah. Well, my my father's an alcoholic. I'm going to be an alcoholic. No, 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 no. That's not what God's saying. Right. It's not what God's saying at all. Or you know, you put put whatever there. This happened in my family, and so it's just who I am. No, it's not who you are. It is who yeah. the generation has. And, and I, I, again, let's just go back to speaking for myself. We've had uh, a generations of, uh, is the word infidelity? Infidelity. Is that the word? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and and I, as I started researching it, it goes back. It goes back to my grandfather, uh, his grand or his father, my father, and then boom, comes to us again. Those of you who have not heard my story, uh, we'll, we'll have that one day. But my wife and I were almost divorced uh, seven years into our marriage. We had a, the rockiest first seven years uh, of our marriage. And uh, God redeemed it. And I could have traveled down that same exact path of misery, of everything else that came along with it. And at that point in my life, I had a decision to make. And, 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 and there was a time in my head that I went, well, it's just what happens in our family. It's just what we're dealt. Yeah. And I realized really quickly through great mentors, through great people around me that said, no, you have every opportunity to tishuva, to turn, to change this course. I love that. And the radiance of God is waiting for you. All you have to do is turn around and run into it. And that, that baffled me. That was not my way of thinking. And so I start to hear that more and more out there. And I, and I relate to it because I was there. Yeah. I think it's helpful to tell people too, for, to hear this is like, is the, the purposeful, intentional, um, inviting Jesus into your marriage. 
inviting Jesus into your singleness right now, if you're alone out there, inviting Jesus into this phase of your life, like wanting him to be integrated in all aspects of your life. And, you know, like if there's like that generational thing, I mean, let's, let's go with like another example. This isn't quite as extreme as like alcoholism, but I always thought like not to knock the greatest generation. I mean, they won two wars. Way to go, guys. It was killer. Okay. <laughs> but like typically that generation as fathers were yeah. not the most emotionally av available. Mm. So maybe if you had a son that wanted to hear like, man, dad loves me, your dad approves of me. Maybe he never got that. Like that generation that came, the kids of that mm -hmm. didn't always like some of those connections were kind of interesting and in what they were lacking when I, when I kind of look at a whole generation that came out of that, right. they weren't necessarily as expressive. Now on the other, other end, you could argue that today's parents were just over the top. You know, everybody right. gets a trophy and we always love you and you're always perfect. That's a little too far. Yeah. But with that group, they didn't necessarily get that. Well, now you have then a group of people who grow up. Number one, they have a kind of a, a hole in their soul because there it is. We're all imperfect. Right. Every generation has issues. And now they lack the ability quite possibly to communicate that to their children who are also looking for that. It wasn't modeled for them. They never got it. They don't feel comfortable expressing that because they didn't grow. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's all those little things that can be passed on. And so what it really becomes is we get in an identity and a belief about ourselves. Like you said, mm -hmm. this is who I am. Mm -hmm. This is the way it's going to go. And that's where like, Jesus like cracks the matrix of the whole thing is it's mm -hmm. he's like, no, no, no. Here's a whole new way of relating to people. Here's a whole new identity. I get what your dad said. It's heartbreaking. That's why I had to die on the cross yeah. or your mother or what happened in this situation as a kid. But like that's he, he's inviting people in a whole new way of thinking about family, marriage, redemption, um, you know, like a whole new life, purpose and meaning. And some of it's weird for us at first. Yeah. But you see how he communicates, how he shows compassion, how he shows love right? and invites us to follow him in that. And so I think that's back to that point of like how we can get stuck in the rut thing. Well, this is who I am. It doesn't have to be that way. Right. Yeah. Wow. That's good. My, my mom used to, well, she still does. She tells me all the time. Um, you've heard the story. My brother passed away in uh, 21. Um, but she said, your brother would always tell me uh, how incredible of a father you are. And, and I thought that was just really sweet because I, yeah. I do, I love my girls and I'll just, just for the record, I don't like kids. <laughs> <laughs> I never liked kids. I never wanted kids and I had my kids and it's like the best gift I've ever had in my life. But again, going back to what I saw, what I experienced, I know today my daddy loves me. Yeah. I know today and I knew then more that my mother loved us. My dad, I don't want to say he was a bad father. He just didn't know how to do it. Yeah. He modeled what he, yeah. what he saw yeah. and what he was, what is modeled to him. And for, for whatever reason, he just didn't, but the guy could work his butt off. Yeah. Yeah. The guy made sure that there was, that we were all provided for and we had a roof over our head and food on the table. And that was his way of, of yeah. showing love. Yeah. But um, I actually stopped playing football because dad only showed up once and that scarred me for a long time. Yeah. As I got older, I had some healing and I had some opportunities and that's, it's kind of what is I realized, you know what? He was just modeling what he thought was right. There it is. And he loves me. He really yeah. loves, he just didn't know how to do it. And he's changed since then too. Yeah. You know, he's, he's, he's a different man. He's in a nursing home, but, uh, I, I do when I get to see him. I know the love is different, but that is, we can, we can take these things. Oops. We can take these things and be, um, just that person. Yeah. Or we could get bitter. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And just go, well, I didn't get it. So I'm, you're not getting it. Yeah. Or, uh, what I, what I realized that I did without even realizing I did it is I was like, I don't want to be that person. Right on. You know? And, and these girls like baffled me when they were born. And I just wanted to spend time with them. And I just wanted to. And so I became this man that my brother sees as he, his, his words, not mine. He said, Daniel is the guy that every child would want as her father. Yeah. And I cool. just, I thought that's not me. Yeah. It's not me. 
sorry, it kind of choked me up a little bit because it's not yeah. my 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 character trait, my my what I was modeled was not that. Yeah. But as everyone says, but God, you know, um, at least I was smart enough at that point or willing enough or obedient enough to give that part of my life to him. Yeah. And the other wow, stuff that's has cool, been man. coming. So when I think to remind people too, like Satan is so passionate about generational curses mm. and generational sin. And, and just to remind folks, like whether it's an addiction that's been passed on, he would love for you to find your comfort in the here and the now, which is short-term pleasure type moments. He doesn't want you to be in long-term suffering or waiting. He'll always offer you these little chances of instead of trusting God, maybe mm. just trying to take the shortcut to meet your own temporary needs in the here and the now, whether it's that or whether you're like hearing, you know, hearing us talk and, and your, your MO is when it comes to your personal, your love life, you're going to go to your horoscope. You're going to go do the tarot card thing. You're going to go see a palm reader because you think they're going to give you some insights about the longings of your heart or your life or the future, or your marriage or what you should do. Um, all of that. And no matter what the form is, if it's like the, the, the story you just shared, like it's that kind of passed on mm -hmm. or it's that other kind of stuff of dabbling in things. Mm -hmm. We're either one is inviting a spirit that wants to keep people broken, crippled mentally, emotionally, spiritually control them, fill them with a sense of, of inadequacy, fill them with a sense of, you know, that they'll never measure up. I mean, there's a, it's important to know in this discussion that there's a deep, deep spiritual deep spiritual component to it right it's not just about behavior and it's not just about how i feel about me there's something that is outside of us that's acting against us that wants to keep further generations in that in that lane if that right. makes sense yeah yeah and it's it's all around us for sure um we see it everywhere but it's not it's not <laughs> it's not forever and it is again yeah. that that word binding changed everything for me when I when I saw that I was like oh my gosh that is yeah there's every binding has a key or a way out yeah period and and that's Jesus and that's essentially what <laughs> what the cross did that's yeah. it's finished I've taken care of it there is nothing that can bind you anymore yeah come to know me come hang out with me and and kind of like what you said last week you know. Um, we we look at it going into it sometimes thinking what do i have to change yeah in order to get there and then that's a, that's the wrong thinking it's like no you're the only thing you have to do is be willing to trust that there is someone that can take away that pain and he will show you he will do it he will handle it he will give you the power he will give you the the healing yeah and it's gonna come i i as as real as I am sitting here, this is real, by the way. Totally real, <laughs> not a hologram. <laughs> not a hologram. I'm not Whitney Houston on tour right now. That's a true thing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he he is able, and it happens, and that's the hardest thing. I re I watched this atheist uh, talking. He was 58 years old, who discovered started reading the Bible. He said, "I never, I, I was never really a." against jesus and god because yeah. i just, just didn't dive in it wasn't my deal right like i just that, that's not real and i looked at everything else he goes and then one day i was like well, why haven't i looked at it yeah and boom like what happened and the the guy that was interviewing him said but how do you know and he goes it's unexplainable but it's in my spirit and you'll never take it away yeah love it it's unexplainable what happens i can't give you <laughs> it's, just, it's amazing Brian, Brian says that all the time. He's like, what happened to him? It's just amazing what God does in your life. So, so can I, th can I throw this out there? Yeah. Little, little Bible angle. Yeah. Uh, Cause you had me Googling like crazy in the first 10 Google, minutes. Google, 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 I Google. wish I could, I, I, I wish I just knew it, but see, it's a Rolodex okay, in my head. Okay. It's, it's, you know, it's old school. Um, Wait, is <laughs> Duffy Rolodex. <laughs> a lot of people uh, may not know this in Jeremiah. 22, 28 to 30. I'll just read this to you. It says, curse Jeconiah that none of his descendants would ever sit on the throne of Israel. This is what the Lord says. Record this man as if childless, a man who will not prosper in his lifetime, 
for none of his offspring will prosper. None will sit on the throne of David or rule anymore in Judah. This is relevant because this is a curse of a king that would be on the side of, not the side of his mother, but on the side of his father in the lineage of Jesus. Okay? Right. So God goes, cursed is Jeconiah from your lineage. In other words, everyone who comes from you will not sit on the throne of Israel. Now that on its surface should be a problem. Right. Because there's there's two lines that make up Jesus. And so the argument would have been, well, look, how could this be the Messiah? This can't be the Messiah. Look, in his line and lineage on his father's side is a curse via King Jeconiah was so evil. There's your idea of curse, right? Right. That no one, not three or four generations, no one as a result of how evil you are is going to sit on the throne of Israel. But what's so cool is what is Jesus? It's Mary and her line was solid. And then his father is his heavenly father. Right. So God is so passionate. Number one, he's so mm -hmm. faithful and true that if he says this is a curse, then it's a curse. Number one, right. he's not going to go back on that. But number two, he's so passionate, passionate about rescuing and redeeming broken people that he circumvents his own curse so that the father is himself. God, the father. Right. Oh, and wow. while he was still faithful to that. what he said. I, I spent a ton of money at the seminary. How do you and come up with this? I stuff? spent a lot of money at the seminary <laughs> for 45 seconds to make a point. I'm not telling you that it, it's really worth the money. I, I don't know. The jury's still out. But my point, if you think about it, he circumvents his own curse so that he is the father. He's still faithful to what he said he would do. And Jesus would still be worthy to sit upon the throne. But he, wow. he's able to go around his own curse that would happen to Jeconiah. And yet Jesus could still say that he was from the line and lineage of David. I mean, this is what's so incredible. And if it's either in Deuteronomy or Isaiah where it's cursed is the man who would hang on a tree. So it's also to just for people to hear out there, like a curse, we think of it as a state, like a state I've been cursed. Right. We don't think of Done. I've been, I've been curses. Like, Oh, what are you struggling with curses? No, you go, I'm struggling with a curse. Right. It's a be a state of being. And sometimes, I, and I know some people out there may disagree with me, and that, that's fine, is I think our issue is our state of being, which is sin. It's not my sins. Right. So in my mind, Jesus died to fix this state of being that's a promise between me and the Father. And that is that I am a sinner. But now because of Jesus, I'm not a, a sinner. I'm a son of a king. And... The curse is no longer on me because he became the curse on the cross. That's what the Old Testament would say. So he became a curse so that I don't have to live under one, so that you don't have to live under one. And so if you're out there and you're just kind of like, well, man, I, I'm kind of in and out of my sin struggle. It's not about get your mind off of sins. Your state of being is sin. God uh, rescued and redeemed you and became that curse. He became your sin. And now you can have you can have a relationship with him, even if you're still a mess out there hearing our voice. You can simply trust him that he loves you right where you're at as you hear our voices, you know, in this yeah. in this conversation. And he became the curse. So you don't have to live under one. Right. That's so good. That is so good. I'm gonna have to listen to this again. <laughs> serious. Like I and I do that. I know, I know, I I I mentioned Brian a lot because I, I talked to him, but it, it, I asked him, have you ever listened to corn? He's like, I don't even listen to my music. <laughs> and, and so I felt bad. I was like, well, I listen to my podcast over and over again because I, I get things because yeah. this isn't us talking. I'm just telling you, I'm sitting here, but this isn't us talking at yeah. the time. I don't know where the, some of this stuff comes True from, story. but, but God, it's awesome. So, so, so the, the moral of this podcast is unless God has audibly said something to you like that, or you're from the lineage of Jeconiah. <laughs> you're not, you're not stuck. You're yeah. not stuck in, in what you've experienced and what has happened in your life. It's not a curse to keep you there for the remainder of your life. And, and even in that story, I'm, I'm looking at that like, okay, so the kids can't get the throne, but does that mean their life's dead? Does that mean their life is, is full of, you know, tearing sackcloths and, ah, and life's over? Right, right. No, you, you know, okay. So, 
there are consequences to some things. You know, just like, again, we were talking about the, the father. You know, okay, if it's father's an alcoholic, yes, you're going to have some abandonment issues. Yes, you're going to you're going to feel like you weren't, you know, taken care of or whatever else. And there's going to leave some some scars and it might cause you to act out in ways, but it doesn't mean it has to stay there. Yeah. There is always a way out and a choice yeah. to choose something differently in a path yeah. it has. Uh, I, and I'll, I'll leave with this one unless you have something else. As I remember sharing my testimony uh, at a church one year. And, and at the end, uh, the question was posed to me, if you have to leave this group with one, one thought, what would it be? And it was the thought of this is sometimes we go down a path for so long. And this was the picture that I got this path of just doing the wrong thing for so long. You think that in order to get out of this, you look back down that path and it's so long. I've yeah. spent so much time here and it's a lot to get out when in actuality, it, it's not that there are two paths. There's the one the enemy has for you. And there is one that the father, the loving, good, kind father has for you. And they align right next to each other. Mm. And all I had to do was step over. Yeah. There was no having to go through this long rigmarole and oh my gosh it's going to be yes there was some repairing yes there were but when i stepped over when i just took one step over and said daddy i want to be with you what came after that was nothing short of a miracle yeah so right on that's where we're at well i mean we landed that plane we're 35 minutes in man <laughs> Right on. Oh man. Thank y'all. This is, <laughs> I, I hope this helped. And, and uh, again, thank you to all the people that are always kind to talk with me. And, and I hear that all the time. Am I going to, is my thought going to be on your podcast? Probably is. <laughs> <laughs> You're writing our material. <laughs> right. So. so thank you. Oh, oh, POD. Wait, can you see it? POD. For those of you that are watching, I have a POD shirt on. Uh, I forgot to mention this in the beginning. April 19th, we will have Sonny Sandoval from POD on One Love HTX. Did you know that? Well, that's really soon. <laughs> it's really soon. <laughs> that's all right up there with you buying out a movie theater. <laughs> I still haven't gotten over that from the last podcast. Oh, my God. Oh, speaking of last podcast. Okay, we're running over. I, I also have to have one more thing. She's listening until the end. I know she is. My good wife. Uh, she said, you better make that right from the last podcast. <laughs> You ever used to have to buy flowers because I talked about <laughs> <laughs> you can, she even, you even ruined pasta perfectly. Okay. That's the only thing that came to my head. She actually doesn't ruin pasta. She's a very good cook. She's amazing. My whole point to that was <laughs> I love her more and more each day, no matter what. And I see things that are just so cute that, that would annoy me at, at one point in my life. And, it just doesn't. So I had, she's like, you got to fix that. You know, I never even, all I ever heard was just, I heard wah, 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 wah. My wife's amazing. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. She's incredible. That's all I heard. So. <laughs> yes, she's incredible. She's incredible. She's a fantastic cook. Lynette, you're a fantastic cook. I'm, I, I love you. All right. <laughs> Pray it's out. <laughs> it's on um, you. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we um, just be with us. Each and every one of us have a unique path. Uh, trial, our struggle, um, our journeys and our stories um, may be riddled with pain, hardship, disappointment, addiction. You, you invite us to leave behind uh, the curse, which is really an identity thing, uh, and to declare and to remember and to know that we're not cursed, we're forgiven. We're not cursed, we're loved. We're not cursed, we're accepted. And we thank you, Jesus, um, that you would overcome uh, even a generational curse in your own family. And uh, under the most incredible circumstances, you would ultimately become a curse that would replace everything that we all have on the cross. You would become the very worst of us. You would become the things that are most shameful about us. You would become the things that we're convinced that generationally we're never going to be able to shake. You became all of that. And we thank you, Jesus, for that sacrifice. And so for those of us listening, that we would just lift up to you, especially if we don't know you, that we'd confess that, Jesus, we love you. 
And Jesus, we need you. You are God. Forgive us. We repent of our sin and we want to walk with you as you walk with us because you've been pursuing us from the very beginning. And so we love you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for this opportunity to share your beautiful message with your people. It's in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Good prayer. I wrote it on my hand. Is that from seminary? Yeah. All right. Yep. Love Bert. you. Bye. <laughs>